The Twilight Saga, Eclipse commonly referred to as Eclipse is a 2010 American romantic fantasy film based on Stephanie Meyer's 2007 novel Eclipse. It is the third installment of the Twilight Saga film series, following 2008's Twilight and 2009's New Moon. Summit Entertainment greenlit the film in February 2009. Directed by David Slade, the film stars Kristen Stewart, Robert Pattinson, and Taylor Lautner, reprising their roles as Bella Swan, Edward Cullen, and Jacob Black, respectively. Melissa Rosenberg, who penned the scripts for both Twilight and New Moon, returned as screenwriter. Filming began on August 17, 2009, at Vancouver Film Studios, and finished in late October, with post-production began early the following month. Bryce Dallas Howard was cast as Victoria, replacing Rochelle Lefebvre who previously played her. The film was released worldwide on June 30, 2010 in theaters, and became the first Twilight film to be released in IMAX. The film has received mixed reception from critics. It held the record for biggest midnight opening in the United States and Canada in box office history, grossing an estimated $30 million, until it was surpassed by Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, Part 2 in 2011. The film then scored the biggest Wednesday opening in the United States and Canada history with $68,533,840 beating Transformers, Revenge of the Fallen $62 million. Eclipse has also become the film with the widest independent release, playing in over 4,416 theaters, surpassing its predecessor, The Twilight Saga, New Moon, which held the record since November 2009. <laughs> <laughs> Plot In Seattle, not far from Forks, Victoria still seeks vengeance on Bella for James's death. Learning that Loron is killed by wolves and to replace him and James, she attacks and bites Riley Beers in order to begin creating an army of newborns, who are many times stronger during their first few months than older vampires. Back in Forks, Edward Cullen and Bella Swan resume their relationship, and discuss the complications of becoming a vampire. At 18 years old, one year older than Edward was when he became a vampire, Bella dislikes the idea of marrying so young, though Edward refuses to turn her into a vampire until they are married, his argument being that she should have a normal, human life. While Bella's father, Charlie Swan, investigates the disappearance of Riley Beers, Edward suspects his disappearance was caused by Victoria and her newborn's army, furthering his suspicions of Riley Beers' intrusion into Bella's bedroom to steal her red blouse. Bella insists that Jacob Black and the rest of the wolf pack would never harm her. Bella wants to go to Jacob's home, even though Edward expresses his dislike of Jacob and concern for her safety, but she returns unharmed. During one of her visits, Jacob confesses that he is in love with Bella, and forcefully kisses her. Furious, she punches him and sprains her hand, and Edward later threatens Jacob and tells him to only kiss her if she asks him to. Bella even revokes the invitations of Jacob and his pack members to her graduation party at the Cullen House, but when Jacob apologizes for his behavior, she forgives him and lets him and the wolf pack attend the party. Meanwhile, Alice sees a vision that the newborn army will attack Forks within the week, led by Riley Beers. Jacob, accompanied by Quill and Embry, overhear this, which leads to an alliance between the Cullens and wolf pack. Later, the Cullens and the Wolves agree to a meeting place and time to train and discuss strategy against the powerful newborns. During their training Jasper explains to Bella that he was a major in the Confederate Army during the Civil War, and he was created by a vampire named Maria to control a newborn army. He eventually realized that Maria used him to fulfill her own ambitions. He didn't know there was another way until he met Alice and joined the Cullens. 
Bella sees the true bond between a mated vampire pair and begins to understand Jasper better. Despite her reluctance to marry young, Bella realizes that spending eternity with Edward is more important to her than anything else and accepts his marriage proposal, along with his late mother's engagement ring. Edward and Bella camp in the mountains to hide Bella from the bloodthirsty newborns. During the night, Bella overhears a conversation between Edward and Jacob, in which they temporarily put aside their hatred towards each other. In the morning, Jacob overhears Edward and Bella discussing their engagement and is furious. Bella desperately asks Jacob to kiss her, and she realizes that she loves him. Edward learns about the kiss but is not upset, because Bella says she loves him more than Jacob. When Victoria appears, Edward kills her while Seth kills Riley. The Cullens and the Wolves, meanwhile, destroy her army, though Jacob is injured saving Leah from a newborn. Several members of the vampire overlords, the Volturi, arrive to deal with the newborn army, and are surprised the Cullens weren't killed. They also see that the Cullens are guarding the newborn, Bree Tanner, who had refused to fight and surrendered to Carlisle. Jane briefly tortures Bree to get information, then has Felix kill her, despite the Cullens' efforts to spare her. Carlisle treats Jacob at his home, and Bella visits him to tell him that even though she loves him, she has chosen Edward. Devastated by her choice, Jacob reluctantly agrees not to come between her and Edward. Bella and Edward go to the meadow, where she tells him she has decided to do things his way, get married, have a normal honeymoon, then be transformed into a vampire. She also explains that she never has been normal and never will be, that she's felt out of place her entire life, but when she is in Edward's world she feels stronger and complete. At the end of the story, they know they need to tell Charlie about their engagement, for which Bella is happy Edward is bulletproof. Topic Cast Topic Production Topic Development In early November 2008, Summit announced that they had obtained the rights to the remaining books in Stephanie Mayer's Twilight series, New Moon, Eclipse, and Breaking Dawn. In February 2009, Summit confirmed that they would begin working on the Twilight saga, Eclipse. On the same day, it was announced that since New Moon director Chris Weitz would be in post-production for New Moon when Eclipse began shooting, he would not be directing the third film. Instead, the film would be helmed by director David Slade, with Melissa Rosenberg returning as screenwriter. David Slade dove right into the project, interviewing cast members individually between two and three times to discuss characters and the plot. Topic. Casting Summit Entertainment revealed that they would replace Rochelle Lefebvre, who played an evil vampire named Victoria, with Bryce Dallas Howard in late July 2009. They attributed the change to scheduling conflicts, and Lefebvre responded by saying she was stunned and greatly saddened by the decision. Howard had previously rejected the role of Victoria as too small of a part. When she was approached to play her in Twilight, Silent Hill's Jodel Ferland was cast as the newly turned vampire, Brie Tanner. Other new cast members include Xavier Samuel as Riley, Jack Houston as Royce King II, Catalina Sandino Marino as Maria, Julia Jones as Leah Clearwater, and Boo Boo Stewart as Seth Clearwater. Actors who auditioned for the various roles were not given a script to work from. Instead, actress Kirsten Prout mentioned, they made the scenes exact transcripts from the book. They didn't give the screenplay out. 
So, the audition side was just reading a page of Twilight and reading the lines that were interspersed between the descriptions. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Filming and post-production. Principal photography for Eclipse began on August 17, 2009, at Vancouver Film Studios. On August 29, photos captured Kristen Stewart, Billy Burke, and other principal actors, filming a scene with graduation caps and gowns. September 2 brought Xavier Samuel together with Kristen Stewart and Robert Pattinson filming at a soundstage for scenes at Bella's house. Director David Slade stated that they filmed a scene with a tent on September 13. He also said that they filmed a kiss between Jacob and Bella on September 17. Filming wrapped up on October 29, 2009, while post-production began in late November. Slade published multiple updates on his Twitter account proclaiming that editing was going well. He said the story and the way they approached the film calls for a more realistic approach. In April 2010, it was revealed that reshoots to the film were needed. Both Slade and Stephanie Mayer were present at the shoot along with the three main stars. In January 2010, an early draft of the film's script was leaked on the internet. The script presumably belonged to star Jackson Rathbone, as his name was watermarked across each page. Topic. Music The score for The Twilight Saga, Eclipse was composed by Howard Shaw, who composed the scores for such films as The Lord of the Rings Trilogy and The Aviator. The film's soundtrack was released on June 8, 2010, by Atlantic Records in conjunction with music supervisor Alexandra Patsava's Chop Shop label. The lead single from the soundtrack is Neutron Star Collision Love is Forever performed by the British band Muse on May 11, 2010, MySpace announced that the full Eclipse soundtrack listing would be unveiled starting at 8 a.m. the following morning every half hour, totaling 6 hours. The album debuted at number 2 on Billboard 200. Topic: Distribution Topic: Marketing. On November 5, 2009, the American film market revealed the first poster for Eclipse. In late February 2010, Summit Entertainment announced that the first trailer would be attached to the studio's own film, Remember Me, which also stars Robert Pattinson. On March 10, 2010, a 10-second preview of the trailer was released online, followed by the release of the full trailer the next day. The trailer's release coincided with the launching of the film's official website. On March 19, 2010, The Twilight Saga, New Moon was released on DVD and Blu-ray. The Walmart Ultimate Fan Edition includes a 7-minute first look at Eclipse. On March 23, the second poster for the film was released. The final Eclipse trailer debuted on The Oprah Winfrey Show, and in promotion for the movie, Robert Pattinson, Kristen Stewart, Taylor Lautner, and Dakota Fanning made a guest appearance on the show May 13. The audience also viewed a version of the film. On June 6, 2010, a sneak peek of the film was shown at the 2010 MTV Movie Awards. That same week, more clips and TV spots were released also. In order to tie in the lunar eclipse on June 26, 2010, Summit Entertainment hosted screenings of the first two films in the Twilight Saga film series in 12 cities throughout the United States. The event was streamed live from Philadelphia and San Diego, and included cast member appearances and special previews of Eclipse. Nordstrom and Summit Entertainment joined together to sell a fashion collection inspired by the film, as was done for the previous installment. 
Created by Awakening, the collection is based on Ashley Green's character, Alice, and Kristen Stewart's character, Bella. The Eclipse collection became available on June 4, 2010. In a similar style to its New Moon marketing, Burger King started promoting the film on Monday, June 21, 2010. Their promotion heavily focuses on the Team Jacob vs. Team Edward aspect of the film. Topic <laughs> Release Tickets for Eclipse went on sale on various online movie ticket sellers on Friday, May 14, 2010. The official red carpet premiere for the film was held on June 24, 2010, at the Los Angeles Nokia Theater. Fans had the option of lining up starting on June 21, 2010, at the Nokia Plaza in Los Angeles before changing location on June 23. An official United Kingdom premiere was held in Leicester Square, London on July 1, 2010. However, Kristen Stewart, Robert Pattinson, and Taylor Lautner were not present. Eclipse opened in 4,416 theaters and 193 IMAX screens. With that, early predictions forecasted the film will gross anywhere from $150 million to $180 million within its first six days of release, putting the record set by the Twilight Saga, New Moon in danger of being broken. Eclipse accounted for 82% of Fandango's online ticket sales, reaching the top five on May 14, 2010. MovieTickets.com stated that Eclipse was the top advance ticket seller on its site, with more than 50% of daily ticket sales. The film was the top advance ticket seller as of June 2010. Early ticket sales for the film also have broken records for Gold Class Cinemas, where more than 8,500 Twilight fans have reserved tickets. The Fairview, Texas location sold out their showings of Eclipse for June 30. The film was re released into theaters on September 13, 2010, in recognition of lead character Bella Swan's birthday. Home media The Twilight Saga, Eclipse was released on DVD in the United States on December 4, 2010. The two-disc special edition DVD and Blu-ray discs include special features such as, eight deleted and extended scenes, music videos by Muse and Metric from The Twilight Saga, Eclipse, original motion picture soundtrack and commentaries by Kristen Stewart and Robert Pattinson, Stephanie Mayer and Wick Jeffrey. It was released on December 1, 2010 in New Zealand and Australia. There is also a gift set. Two disc collector's edition which features a unique packaging and six collectible photo cards. In North American DVD sales, the film has currently grossed $164,676,695 and has sold more than 9,424,505 units. Topic Reaction Topic Box Office Eclipse set a new record for the biggest midnight opening in the United States and Canada in box office history, grossing an estimated thirty point one million dollars in over four thousand theaters. The record was formally held by the previous film New Moon with $26.3 million in 3,514 theaters. It held the record until summer 2011, when it was broken by Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, Part 2, which made $43.5 million. Eclipse also had the highest midnight gross of the franchise until it was topped in November 2011 by its successor Breaking Dawn, Part 1, $30.3 million. The movie also surpassed Transformers, Revenge of the Fallen in total grosses for a midnight screening in IMAX.
Eclipse garnered more than $1 million at 192 theaters, while Revenge of the Fallen earned $959,000, until it was beaten five months later by Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, Part 1 with $1.4 million. The film grossed $68.5 million on its opening day in the United States and Canada, becoming the biggest single-day Wednesday opening over Revenge of the Fallen $62 million, and the third biggest single-day opening ever at the time. As of 2011, the film has the third highest opening day gross of the series behind New Moon $72.7 million and Breaking Dawn, Part 1 $72 million. Furthermore, the film earned $9 million at various IMAX locations during its first week. After six days of release in the US and Canada, the film ended Independence Day with a total of $176.4 million, including $64.8 million during its first weekend. In its second weekend, the film fell 51%, a better standing than its predecessors, grossing an estimated $31.7 million. The film opened overseas with $16.2 million, beating records set by the film's predecessor in Russia with an estimated $3.9 million, since surpassed by Pirates of the Caribbean, On Stranger Tides, which earned $5 million, in Italy with an estimated $3.1 million, in the Philippines grossing $1.2 million, and in Belgium, where it grossed an estimated $1.1 million. It is the third best opening day ever in Italy. In the Philippines, Eclipse topped Spider Man 3 for the best opening day ever, and was the highest opening day ever in Belgium. In three days, Eclipse topped the box office with $121.3 million and during its first weekend, it earned $71.3 million. Overseas in its second weekend, the film grossed $70.6 million from 9,440 screens in 63 markets, a 1% drop from its first weekend. The film opened in the United Kingdom at number one, grossing $20.7 million from 523 locations including previews, the market's biggest opening of 2010 until Toy Story 3 surpassed it and about $1.7 million more than New Moon grossed in its opening weekend in November 2009. The film also debuted at number one in France, grossing $13.3 million, marking the third largest opening in the country for a 2010 film behind Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, Part 1's $20.7 million and Alice in Wonderland's $15.4 million. The film opened at number one in South Korea with $4.9 million. The film ended its box office run in the US and Canada on October 21, 2010, having grossed $300,531,751, surpassing its predecessor New Moon, which grossed $296,623,634 a few months prior, to become the highest grossing film of the franchise franchise and the highest grossing romantic fantasy, werewolf, and vampire movie of all time at the American and Canadian box office. It is the fourth movie of 2010 to reach $300 million and ranks 46th on the all-time chart in the United States and Canada. Compared to its predecessor overseas, it has grossed $393,047,815 against New Moon's $413,203,156. Therefore, internationally, Eclipse remains the second highest grossing film in the franchise with $693,579,566 against New Moon $709,826,790.
Eclipse's highest grossing markets outside North America are the UK, Ireland, and Malta $45,709,785, Germany, $33,087,955, France and the Maghreb region, $32,987,421, Italy, $19,984,000, Brazil, $30,400,000, $99,010, and Australia Critical response Reviews for the film were mixed, but more favorable than New Moon. Review aggregation website Rotten Tomatoes gives the film a score of 48% based on 241 reviews, with an average rating of 5.44.10. The website's critical consensus reads, "...stuffed with characters and overly reliant on uninspired dialogue, Eclipse won't win the Twilight Saga many new converts, despite an improved blend of romance and action fantasy." Review aggregation website Metacritic, which assigns a weighted mean rating out of 100 reviews from film critics, the film holds a rating score of 58 one hundredths based on 38 reviews, indicating, "...mixed or average reviews." The Hollywood Reporter posted a positive review of Eclipse, saying the film, "...nails it." Peter de Bruge of Variety reports that the film, finally feels more like the blockbuster this top-earning franchise deserves." Rick Bentley of McClatchy Newspapers stated the film was the best in the Twilight Saga so far, suggesting that, "...the person who should be worried is Bill Condon, the director tapped for the two-part finale, Breaking Dawn. He's got a real challenge to make movies as good as Eclipse." The New York Times A.O. Scott praised David Slade's ability to make an entertaining film, calling it funny and better than its predecessors, but wrote that the acting has not improved much. Giving the film 4.5 out of 5 stars, Betsy Sharkey from the Los Angeles Times praised David Slade's method of blending his previous works to form a funny movie. She stated, Eclipse Eclipse S. its predecessors. The film was also listed in 49th place by Moviephone on its list of the 50 best movies of 2010. Roger Moore of the Orlando Sentinel gave the film 2.5 out of 4 stars, stating, The dullness of the performances really stands out when somebody like Bryce Dallas Howard, or Anna Kendrick turn up and liven up their scenes, while calling the film, too chatty and too long. He did compliment David Slade's directing and noted that the movie will please the fans. Michael Phillips of the Chicago Tribune gave the film two out of five stars, stating that David Slade's pacing is everything like molasses running uphill. He also criticized the characters, the actors portraying them, the big close-ups of handheld devices, and called Howard Shaw's score gunk. Wesley Morris from the Boston Globe stated, If the first two movies were Get a Room, Part 3 is Get a Therapist. Quote dot. He said the second and third film repeat that discovery in Twilight without truly deepening it. Dot the movies are interesting without ever being good. A mixed review said that while Eclipse restores some of the energy New Moon zapped out of the franchise and has enough quality performances to keep it involving. The film isn't quite the adrenaline-charged game-changer for love story haters that its marketing might lead you to believe. The majority of the action remains protracted and not especially scintillating should we or shouldn't we conversations between the central triangle. Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun-Times gave the film a more positive review than for the first two films in the saga, but still felt the movie was a constant, unclever conversation between the three main characters. He criticized the gazers 
both Edward and Jacob give Bella throughout the movie, and noted that the mountain range that appears in the film looks like landscapes painted by that guy on TV who shows you how to paint stuff like that. He also predicted that a lack of understanding for the film series in general would not bode well with the audience, stating, I doubt anyone not intimately familiar with the earlier installments could make head or tails of the opening scenes. He gave the film two stars out of four. Steve Pasall of the St. Peterburg Times called the movie, just monstrously bad, and said, Eclipse leaves the sputtering story arc in idle, with only an uneasy truce between the vampire and werewolf clans amounting to anything new, and rating it grade C. The Guardian's columnist Peter Bradshaw gave the film a one star rating in a review that lampooned Bella's continued abstinence, among other plot elements. Bradshaw, dubbing the series, The Epic of the Unbroken Duck, wrote that, Bella Swan is starting to make Doris Day look like the nympho from hell, and concluded that it could be time to sharpen the wooden stake. Topic. Accolades Topic. Sequels Summit Entertainment announced in November 2008 that they had obtained the rights to the fourth book in the Twilight series, Breaking Dawn and Greenlit a two-film adaptation in April 2010. The Twilight Saga, Breaking Dawn, Part 1 was released on November 18, 2011 and Part 2 on November 16, 2012 with Bill Condon directing, and author Stephanie Mayer co-producing. See also Vampire film <laughs>